Hi, welcome to Colleagues Getting Coffee. My name is Annalise James, and today I am joined by Joe Bushnell, who is the director of Aspects Gallery. <laughs> so much. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, and thank you for letting us be here every month. I love it so much. It's amazing. So how did you get into Aspects? You've been here for a long, long time. Yeah, it, it's actually nearly 19 years. Ah. Um, it's a bit of a shock <laughs> to the system. I'm... You're like checking the calendar. Oh my God, it's 19 years. <laughs> yeah. So um, I actually, I've always been passionate about art mm -hmm. and I don't really know quite how that happened mm -hmm. because I lived in a small town in Sussex and we didn't even have an art gallery in the town. Mm -hmm. So, but I think it was like watching children's TV back in the 70s. Yeah, um, colourful and crazy. Take Heart and Morph yeah. and Tony Hart was a big influence and was desperate to get my uh, artwork on the TV oh, and wow. on that show. So um, I, I wanted to be an artist mm. at the age of two. Um, I actually turned out not to be a very good artist. Oh, outrageous. But I was really interested in art history and then became more interested in arts management. Mm. So that was my... That was my route. Initially studying a practice degree in fashion and oh, textiles. Okay. Oh, nice. And then studying art history, arts management, and yeah. computers and their application oh, to art history. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Yeah. I love that, bridging the digital world. Yeah, into absolutely. Art. What I love most about art is that it, it covers so many facets. So, like you've just said, you kind of have watercolour on the television, you've got fashion mm. design, you've got computers. Mm. Like, it's lovely. And obviously, Aspects has been around for a long, long time. Yeah. What's maybe been your favourite exhibition? Um, I think. It's really hard to choose a favourite exhibition. It's really hard because they're all so different. Mm. And I'm particularly interested in exhibitions that really change people's perceptions of the space and, okay. and surprise people. So um, actually, before we moved here, um, because we, we were in our previous building for 25 years before oh, we moved okay. here. Where was that? Um, in Brougham Road, which is sandwiched in between Elmgrove and Winston Churchill oh, Avenue. Okay. And we were in a converted church. And there was a show we did there, one of my earliest, um, with Ross Sinclair, called Journey to the Edge of the World, mm. which was about the island St Kilda um, in the Scottish Highlands that was evacuated. Mm. And um, they had their own sort of form of democracy, and um, he, he transformed the gallery space using only cardboard boxes and paint. And video mm. and um, it was it was wonderful to see the artists who had originally set up the gallery coming into the exhibition space and being completely thrown oh my god it's like complete transformation and so there's been lots of shows mm. that we've done subsequently like Lindsay Sears was a crazy exhibition mm. it was probably the hardest show we've ever worked on oh, yeah. um, so you know, and it's, lots, lots. Yeah. It's lovely to have a space that constantly transforms. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you know, when I came here, I thought colleagues getting coffee. This would be an amazing location because it's just so beautiful and it inspires people to relax, to talk creatively. So even though they're talking about business, leadership, sales, whatever, yeah, they just feel relaxed and and open. It, and it's just beautiful. So. It's it's a good environment, mm. and um, and I think the opportunity for people to come across art in this environment and just make them think differently and perhaps that makes them reflect on their business or yeah, yeah. other things in their life. Mm. So. so how can people use this space if they wanted to? Well, obviously, you know, people can come and support it simply by visiting and, mm -hmm. and coming to the cafe and, and so on. But also, we rent spaces out for events. Okay. So lots of businesses come and do um, uh, events like... Um, product launches or celebrations and mm. so on. Um, we had a photo shoot here just a couple of weeks ago. Oh, nice. That was really exciting. Oh, yeah. Very high-end fashion brand. Oh, how exciting. So I want the dirt. Yeah. I can tell you're not going to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, um, it, it's really important for us yeah. because although we are a, largely a publicly funded a gallery we have to earn income to help mm. support um, the work that we do and so when businesses come and rent the space here mm. they're also they're also doing good they're supporting our charitable aims um, so I hope yeah. that's you know positive for their corporate and social well, responsibility. Well we're all about the give back here mm. I love it I love give back so 100% people should book. <laughs> book <laughs> <laughs> okay so i am interested in art and as it relates to business mm. because obviously in the last few good few years now you there's been a real transition in the workplace 
um, offices, um, even hotels sometimes, art is really coming into the business community yeah. and inspiring people. So I went to a... Um, offices it was oh, I can't remember where it was now but it was a really large corporate company that you wouldn't expect mm. it and the entire wall was a forest mm. and then they had these beautiful really contemporary sort of arched red chairs mm. and then in the other conference room it was just seaside and you were just oh, I thought this is really surprising that yeah. they're bringing in so much visual aid mm. what do you think that means I think it's I think businesses understand that people need to be inspired to think creatively at work mm. um, and so sometimes those really anodyne corporate environments mm. just don't really do it for people and if you want people to think differently you need to give them different stimulus different space yeah. that's why so many people do sort of away days and things here because it just lets them open out yeah even the space being bigger and like all the old brick yeah it just air yeah. you know the the five meter tall you know yeah. ceilings and so on but in the in the workplace there's been lots of companies that have supported businesses by renting out artists work and mm. rotating it and changing it but also it's really exciting when artists when businesses work with artists mm. to commission works which are specifically for that business yeah. and um that's something that we can help with but also something that lots of other galleries can help match businesses okay, up with artists. that's interesting. So what if I was a large business and I, you know, maybe I'm in, say, recruitment mm -hmm. and I want a piece of art that really represents, like, being on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> you could get an artist to do some sort of abstract. Yeah, totally. Oh, it's fascinating. It's, um, it's all about sort of connecting, businesses connecting with their local arts organisations mm. or their local artist community and yeah. identifying what they can do that's different. I think all, all businesses are looking for a point of difference now, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think you're so right because I was talking on the show a, a couple of weeks ago about um, making your offer as an employer different mm. and making it so you are you care about well-being and you genuinely do. Yeah. You give people a day off for their birthday. You kind of are flexible working, mm. these sorts of things. So actually all of these elements are making well-being high on the agenda for employees. Yeah. And that's what people are drawn to mm. because it's gone is this I will work in this organization for 30 years and I will clock in clock out um, every single day it, it has to be more flexible more dynamic more mm. creative mm. visual yeah it's a really important on well-being as well art isn't it mm. Mm. I think Absolutely. it makes a massive impact on people's you're, you're right flexibility is mm. really critical this is something that we operate here is that we have we're really quite relaxed mm. about the way in which people use their time because we we want people to maximize you know the what they are able to do mm. and if someone is thinking about oh, I've got to go and pick up the kids and I cut it a bit fine or I need mm. to go to the doctors or something let them take that time off as toil and, yeah, and be yeah. more flexible yeah um, and in, in business now as you said they've got um, thing where actually it's really hard to keep excellent employees because yeah. you know if they're not treated well they're going to move on absolutely yeah 100 percent. so whilst this is a glorious space and glorious and also glorious chocolate cake not mm. gonna lie um <laughs> it is a business yeah and actually what are the challenges for running a gallery in portsmouth it's yeah a lot yeah. of challenges <laughs> i think um you know as we said, I've been here 19 years, yeah. and the sector has changed enormously in that time. Mm. So fundamentally, we're a public gallery. We are supported through public grants from the Arts Council, so that comes down through national government via DCMS to the Arts Council, and then yeah. to us as a national portfolio organisation. Okay. And then we also receive a small amount of support um, through the local authority, Portsmouth City Council. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah. So, but that actually has depleted enormously mm. thanks to austerity. So, in thanks austerity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, in the last ten years, um, we've seen our, gov our government grants cut by fifty percent or mm. over fifty percent. And so, as an organisation, we've completely had to shift our business model. Mm. Well, you have to think like a business, don't you? And just be like, yeah. right, we have to create revenue. Yeah, How yeah, do do this? absolutely. So we need to raise, raise grants from mm. trusts and foundations. 
also we've all talked about um, support for corporates mm. and that's been that's been a really massive shift for us mm. working um, with businesses to try and support our educational activities um, but we also run a shop and um, as as part of a redevelopment of the gallery we established a um, a creative space for small startups. Oh, okay. So on our mezzanine level, which once upon a time used to be our meeting room, my rather massive office, <laughs> and um, you're like, I'll take a cut yeah, on the office. I don't, give back. I, I don't have a desk <laughs> now. <laughs> so we and, and we had the staff offices upstairs. Mm. Now we have rented that out to 15 different companies, oh, wow. and that provides those creative companies mm. with a huge amount of flexibility. So we've got. Um, a design company that's got space for six people and is a sort of standalone office space, mm. all the way through to individual desk spaces, oh, okay. which um, small startups rent. So we've got interior designers, architects, photographers, publishers. And what an amazing space for them to work in. Yeah. And also, what an amazing area for them to collaborate in. Yeah, and also, it's really exciting because there's loads of cross fertilization yeah. between the businesses. So because everyone's sat upstairs working mm -hmm. alongside each other, when they need a photographer or when they need an architect, mm. they go to each other. That's amazing. So it's very exciting. I want to get in there. How do I get up? <laughs> We've got quite a long waiting list. Oh. Having, yes. having established that space about um, three years ago mm. and it being a really slow start mm. and people coming and going quite quickly, yeah. we're pretty static now. And oh. I don't think anyone's left for over a year. Wow. Um, and, and some businesses have grown in that time from mm. one desk to four desks. Yeah. So they're employing people that's really yeah. exciting this is amazing for growth so yeah that's, ama that's amazing and I don't yeah. think people knew about that so. no absolutely so it's worth staying on the waiting list <laughs> yeah I might just do it I'll be like hope 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 one day it'll happen <laughs> but that's amazing. that's been re really important and so obviously if businesses can also support by getting involved coming in maybe running events here yeah maybe getting on the waiting list that sort of thing would be super helpful absolutely. to you absolutely but also it's Actually, businesses can help us by simply telling their staff yeah. about us. Mm. You know, the more people that know about us in the city, the better, because then we're able to serve the wider community. Mm. Um, so things like Family Saturdays, free of charge, well, it's very simple for businesses to be able to tell their, to do. Tell their, uh, yeah. their employees. Well, hopefully this will help with that too. Mm. So in terms of aspects and, and different shows that you have on, how yeah. regularly do they change? How often does the space transform? In the main exhibition space, we have four exhibitions a year. Mm -hmm. And then we have a slightly higher number in our craft exhibition space and in our learning space. Okay. Um, but we also have artist residences as well. So while the main exhibition lasts for three months, there's often things changing throughout mm. the time. So our visitors get to see something different every time they come, pretty much. And you do a lot of collaboration with other organisations as well um, yeah. to kind of infiltrate that message to the community. Do you do um, activities where you bring businesses in specifically for events or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. The um, I, I think probably most importantly is our summer programme of activity. Mm. So we actually launch that programme of activity every autumn, immediately after the previous programme is mm, finished. Okay. And we develop the theme, we identify what roughly we want to do. It normally involves the commission of about three artists. Okay. And then right at that early point, we invite businesses to get involved. So um, they support the project as sponsors, but also they get an opportunity to help shape the project mm. and help influence the the development. Um, we work with the University of Portsmouth um, on that project as well and so their students often come and, and develop mm -hmm. as ambassadors for that project and then that results in a, a number of artist commissions and an education program which reaches out to schools, mm -hmm. which reaches out to families and also goes around the city at key community events. Okay. So we do things like the and Family Festival mm -hmm. or we go to Gun Wharf or to the, the High Street mm -hmm. um, and then we 
end up at the Victorious Festival at the end nice. of August. So, you like celebrate with Yeah. <laughs> so it's really we're we're actually working on the um, the launch of um, next year's program, which is going to be called Exchange. This is good forward planning. Yeah, I love it. And we're launching that next week. Amazing. So we're just finishing inventors yeah. and exchanges on the yeah. cards and it's Amazing. really exciting because you also do uh, another activity don't you with uh, like dementia yeah yeah so the as an educational charity we work with people right the way from like tiny toddlers mm. we have a mini makers um workshop mini makers. mini makers that is so cute every wednesday from to fives free of charge we oh. do family saturdays we obviously work with lots of schools and so yeah. on all the way through to working with people at, towards the end of their lives mm. so we run a project called generate which is for people with dementia and also their carers so it's an opportunity for the people that have dementia mm. to focus on artwork often they're people who are interested in art but maybe have never actually done it since they were at school yeah and that's amazing and that really mm. unlocks a huge well a lot of people a lot creativity. of creativity uh, art is, is a kind of a passion or a hobby but actually when you kind of get into say corporate world business that all sort of gets shunted to the side mm. you haven't got enough time to mm. really invest in yourself but it's so important to yeah. give yourself that time to think creatively and be creative because it does just get your brain firing off in mm. different ways mm. doesn't it there's um there's a woman called barbara who um started with us right at the beginning mm. of the program so that was what nearly nearly five years ago and she um she's in her 80s and she came and she'd never done any art activity before mm. since school and she started off coloring just coloring in yeah um really simple now she's working at an easel oil painting her own compositions oh my God. she is a, a force to be reckoned with oh, she's wow. an amazing artist and that's really important yeah. all of the people that participate in generate we don't really see them as sort of participants we see them as artists in their yeah. own right yeah absolutely that's amazing i think that's a really good example actually of when sometimes people can be locked behind oh well because there's so much instagram and social media around art so a lot of artists share their work which is lovely but it makes like people like me as an example i'm terrified to pick something up because i think i'm rubbish i'm like oh no i can't do that i can't draw no i don't do that and i just think oh, it's a shame a lot yeah. of people lock it away don't they because yeah. they just feel confident enough yeah it's, it's lovely for giving people that opportunity yeah it and that's that's what we are set yeah. up to do. We, we're, um, as, a, as a mission, it, mm. we have to support emerging artists and reveal the creative process. Okay. And that creative process can sometimes be, you know, the professional artist who's mm. developed a practice over yeah. um, decades, or it can be within you. Yeah. And that's really, that's really important. So that's I love it. What we do. I love it. I love what you do here and I love the space and I love that you've been our hosts and it's been amazing. How can people find out more about Aspects? Well, um, obviously all of the social media channels. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we have Instagram, Twitter and Facebook and so on. But okay. our website is www.aspects.org.uk. Amazing. Thank you so much, Thank Jane. Thank you.